Tutorial 6 Designing the rest of the wall using AnchorWall software version 6.0 In Tutorial 5 we completed the design of our maximum height panel. However, the panels to the left and right of this panel have not yet been designed. The Extend Left and Extend Right buttons allow the designer to extend a given reinforcement design to all other panels, then modify as necessary. As you get more familiar with this technique, you will develop your own methods of applying your grid designs throughout the wall, but we will show you one. Since we have started at the highest panel, it is likely that if our geogrid length and layout works for this panel, it will be conservative for lower panels. Of course, this will have to be checked, but it is a good place to start. Keep in mind that at some point, someone will have to construct this wall. The designer should always balance an economical use of geogrid with a reasonable level of complexity in terms of the installation. By keeping the geogrids at consistent elevations throughout the wall, which is automatically done with the extend functions, we are preserving a consistent pattern for the contractor to lay the geogrids out. Over complex designs, that is, consistently changing geogrid lengths and elevations, done in the name of economizing geogrid, often causes more problems during installation and potential down the road. As mentioned, one method of applying geogrid throughout the wall is using the Extend Left and Extend Right buttons, which essentially copies the current geogrid layout to all other panels. To begin, we will extend our geogrid layout to the left and right side of the subject panel. We can see in our elevation view graphic the geogrid design has been extended throughout the wall. Keep in mind the other panels have not been tested yet. We are just adding geogrid to them. Our next step would be to get an initial idea of where our design stands for the wall as a whole. With the Include ICS button off, hit the Analyze All button. We can see immediately from the elevation view that some of the panels pass all criteria, shown in green, while others have at least one criteria that is not being satisfied. Now it is just a matter of fine-tuning the design. Every designer will have their own methods, but in general, it is good practice to leave a given geogrid length for a number of panels until a threshold is reached where the geogrid can be changed by a reasonable amount for the next number of panels. Moving to a panel of lower height, we can now adjust the geogrid length to better suit it. Since we want to keep the grid pattern the same and just modify the length to be more fitting to this lower panel, we hit the Minimize Lengths button. AnchorWall software then shortens all lengths to meet the minimum standard for base to height ratio. This new grid length has to then be checked. Hit Analyze Panel. It appears the minimized lengths are satisfactory. Now run the ICS on this panel only. It appears the ICS analysis is also satisfactory. We can now extend the new grid length left of this panel and continue this process for all panels in the wall. Note that when the grids are extended left, they are turned blue again in the elevation view, meaning you have changed the grid design since the last time we ran the Analyze All button and they have to be checked again. I will quickly go through and design the wall to ensure all panels meet the minimum criteria. Now that all our geogrid layout is complete and all panels are green, which means they exceed the minimum design criteria, we can try and organize our design to make it easier for the contractor to understand. A big part of ensuring a successful wall project is making sure the design information is clearly transferred to the design drawings and easily understood by the contractor. It was with this spirit in mind that the Auto Grid Group function was created. This function group panels by geogrid length and type. When it is run, AnchorWall software analyzes the geogrid layout in each panel and those panels on either side of it to determine if there are common geogrid lengths and whether a group of panels can be defined. Once groups have been determined, labels appear in the elevation view, such as A, B, C, and so on. Each grid group has a particular geogrid length associated with it. To view the resulting grid groups, the user can select the View Groups button to see a summary of the groups. In the PDF report and the DXF CAD output, the grid groups will be represented in a table indicating the geogrid layouts. For even more clarity, the geogrid layers shown in the elevation view will be labeled as well in the DXF output. 
If the designer requires a more custom labeling system, there is also a manual grouping option called Add Group. Using this feature, the designer can select any number of adjacent panels and label them. For example, if the designer wanted to define which portion of wall included a three horizontal to one vertical slope above it and which sections were flat, she could label the wall using the Add Group function accordingly. By holding down the Shift key, the left or right arrow keys can be used to select a number of adjacent panels. Once the group of panels is selected, the Add Group function or the Control m hotkey will display a dialog box that allows the user to type in a label or description of the group selected. This can be then done for other ungrouped panels. We will revert back to our original Auto Grid Group by clearing groups and selecting the Auto Grid Group function again. That's it. Our design is complete with respect to internal, external, and local stability, as well as internal compound stability for both static and seismic conditions. If this wall requires a global stability check by a geotechnical engineer, AnchorWall software is equipped to create an export file that can be checked by the Global Stability Program RESA 3.0 or GSLOPE. To export this file, simply go to the File menu and select Export to RESA 3.0. You can then pick the wall and the section or panel you want reviewed. Now the designer can create a fully customizable design report. In the next tutorial, tutorial number 7, we will create a report and export our design to CAD.